Okay, hello internet. I'm down here on your bottom bottom left hand side corner. It is me, Udo ADHD. Uh thank you so much for being subscribed. And if you're not, just wait and see if you catch the vibe, then you subscribe. We go off vibes here. I don't edit my stuff, but it's been a little bit. Things have been crazy. Things are still crazy, but the one thing that never changes is I am addicted to making video content for our small little community we are a very very small channel so if you do subscribe make sure you say hi in the comments so we can welcome you to the tribe now me and my friend we are trying to glow up level up this year and one of those things is financial okay we got to get our financials in order and don't worry i will bring you along for that ride but we have been getting into Ramit Sethi if you haven't heard of him he is a financial guru of sorts I've actually been following him since his 20s and I am impressed with his evolution I'm really impressed with him and I really like him and we have been watching him his podcast he has a podcast where he has couples come on the show <clears throat> actually let me reduce this volume I think I might be screaming in your ear Eek. he has couples come onto his show and he helps them with their money problems and is always much juicier than than you first anticipated and this couple in particular drove us crazy and i was like okay okay i ha i wish i recorded my first initial reaction but just watch this couple with me i'm going to play it at a higher speed because these this podcast is like an hour long, okay? So I'm going to do it at 1.5 speed. But, y'all, the comments, the comments of this couple, the comments under this video are like, this couple is so relatable. Really? I want y'all to watch this with me and let me know, is this couple relatable to you? Because I think they have um, a lot of problems. Let me adjust the volume. All right, here we go. Some examples that you have submitted about how to tell if someone is wealthy. The only place to get this is on the podcast newsletter. And once it comes out, it will oh, not be reshared. So you've got to sign up right now to get it this Saturday. Go to iwt.com slash podcast newsletter to sign up. It's coming out this Saturday, July 15th. Again, iwt.com slash podcast newsletter to get my new newsletter on the subtle signs of wealth. Part of me is resentful that to Mike that he like wanted this house so bad and that now we have all these things to maintain. But renting was easier. Some days I'm like, God, I just want to move back to our camper van so we can travel the country. This just feels like a burden. Like this isn't necessarily what I wanted. Yeah, we did decide to do this together. Part of me is like, I just did this for you. There was a lot of time to bring these concerns up in the process of buying the house and to really stop us there. Yeah, and I remember a lot of fights about it too. And I don't feel like my needs are important. I think because I'm just so resentful about it that I'm like, just screw it all. How can you do this with the two of you and you're about to incur more stress than you've ever had in your life with a baby? Yeah. I'm terrified. <laughs> are you terrified enough to make a change? Yeah. Kate? That's a little preview. <sighs> I'd like you to meet Mike, who's 29, and Kate, who is 32. Mike is a chef, and Kate is a wellness advisor for a spa resort. Now, in their application, they wrote this sentence describing their situation. He wrote, we are closing on a house next week and also just found out she's pregnant. I think today you're going to be quite surprised with the direction of this conversation. So let's jump right in. Okay. As, How long until watch the baby this, comes? Today is you to comment as you watch. Okay, that's what I do. Comment as you watch. YouTube now has a feature when you click comment, you it has like a timestamp thing so when you click the timestamp thing it automatically has the timestamp that you're talking about so feel free to spam the comment section because i really want to know what are y'all's reactions to this and financially speaking what has changed since you found out you were pregnant two weeks after we were pregnant we closed on our first home wow that what is a fixer upper and our home is important to us because we have it's a very small house but it's on a lot of land mm -hmm. because being able to provide food for ourselves through farming is also really important. So that way we don't have to rely on the grocery store as much anymore. That was the motivating factor of our house was that it's a small house, perfect, not a lot to maintain. It wasn't maintained though. So there is a lot to put into it financially. 
and it all happened at the same time. Okay, like so you bought a house, house. bought a house, you found out you were pregnant. Rowan. Yeah. Were you, and so what brings you here? Why now? Um, well, we, I feel like we were doing really well until we got the house. I had read your book and I had automated investing, automated savings, and I had a pretty good savings. I had Let some investments say, and I pretty much used all of it to get the house. And uh, I, I right away was concerned about the look on the husband's face right away. I was concerned as we continue watching, you'll finally realize why he has this look on his face. <laughs> I was the one that was really keeping track of our money and kind of in conflict with Kate over spending. And then once we got the house and I kind of abandoned the automation and all that, now she's the one that is keeping track of the money and worrying about credit and uh, like just looking up at it. And I have almost given up, like just kind of said, okay, you're, you're in charge of the money now. And I, I don't like that. We're not really on the same page about it. And I, I guess there's something going on there with me that, that kind of, just i don't know i like gave up when we got the house it took so much to get the house that i felt defeated and it was like oh this work has kind of gone to nothing and now it's like all the money is going towards fixing up the house okay did you expect this when you went to buy the house you know how much it was going to cost for the down payment and all that stuff yeah and i was like well i have the savings that's what it's for and i have this investment that's what it's for right okay and then what changed uh i don't know all, all the work of the house i guess expected or not expected uh I expected to handle it easier, I think. Why'd you buy the house? The land. So that way we can have farm. We just got chickens today. <laughs> Remember that. They bought this house because of the land to farm and have chickens. Um, but mostly the Keep land so that way we can provide food for our family. And this idea of providing food, did you both grow up doing something similar? No. Oh. Well, nope. that's interesting. What do you think that there's a financial conflict here? Well, we just kind of got on the same page, but we were arguing over uh, buying a mattress. There was some conflict around, and I wanted one. She didn't. All right, walk me through it. I think Kate actually brought up the mattress first, like sent me the link to the mattress, and then I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." It was a pretty expensive mattress, and I think what Hold brought on. how us... expensive? Uh, ended up being like twenty three, twenty two. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. That's that's a good price mattress. And so what happened then? So I said, "Let's yeah, do it," and um, we had to put it on a credit card, or okay. we actually used a, a payment plan, the Affirm thing, through oh, God. online right. or whatever. Both of us put a lot of emphasis into quality products that are non-toxic and i'm pregnant and have a baby and the baby's gonna be in our room and i don't want those off-casting chemicals and so that was what was most important to me in a mattress regard okay because i was like how did you get a two thousand three hundred dollar mattress and now she's talking about that it's all natural doesn't have those gases and stuff that if you don't know most mattresses they release some weird gases it's not good for you to inhale and and then some mattresses have fiberglass in them like healthy mattresses is just it's a whole thing it's a whole thing she's a wellness coach or wellness coordinator at a spa so that's something she would think about regardless of the price okay how did you decide how much you could afford can i go out on a limb and guess mm -hmm. okay can i guess that you had problems sleeping you said we got to get a new mattress you found a mattress you liked and cost wasn't really part of the equation at all yeah wow that's so shocking and was there any point where either one was like 2,400 bucks, that's like a lot. Could we get one for less? Uh, yeah, that did come up, but we wanted a mattress that didn't have, uh, that was a little safer and more natural. Okay, so let, let me ask you, Kate, where's the conflict here? It sounds like one person wanted a new mattress, you both found one, you bought it, and it, you can afford it. I think it's like more within ourselves than anything, even more than with each other. What is it within you? Like you don't want to have a payment plan? Okay. Yeah, and so I've always just been, when money comes in, I'll save what I can, but I am here to enjoy my life. Okay. And now I'm like, oh my God, we have no savings and we have a baby coming and I'm going to have a cut in pay. And so now I have this like inner turmoil of, I can't believe I haven't been saving more my whole life. I'm fearful of not being able to provide for our child. Well, you're gonna be able to provide food. You got the chickens. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what are you fearful of not being able to provide? There are a few moments in people's lives where they really genuinely care about money. And the major ones are getting married, having children, as you just heard Kate say, getting divorced, and retiring. But because most of us don't really actively think about money on a regular basis, we don't actually know how to act in those moments. It would be like me asking you, how are you going to react next time you get in a car crash? You're like, I don't know. You've probably never been in one. In times of uncertainty, we look to other people for cues. And this is why the first time you eat at a fancy restaurant, you observe the person next to you. You see how they use their fork. And it's also why people say identical phrases when it comes to moments like having children. They'll say things like, mm -hmm. I want to provide for our kids. I want to give them everything 
I didn't have. I don't want them to struggle like I did. And my favorite one of all, now that we're having kids, we need a house with a lawn and an SUV. Do you? Do you really? And what does providing for a child mean? Can we get specific? These are the kind of conversations that are so important to have before one of these life situations happens to you. Otherwise, you might find yourself just looking to others for cues and doing exactly what everybody else does. Yeah, I love that. Tip. Security and stability. That's a great tip. What does that mean? We are choosing to spend more money on, like we have, an, we put a lot of emphasis on spending on our grocery budget so that way we can buy good food. I am afraid that's going to go away when, because especially because we're just starting our farm. And um, I'm like putting that above paying my loans. I'm just not paying them right now. And so I'm making that choice, but then that becomes like, what if these things get taken away from me because I'm not paying what I'm supposed to be, my student loans, because I'm not paying those right now. And so I have a lot of conflicts about that. It doesn't sound like you're conflicted. I feel conflicted. <laughs> I feel... I love that he called that out early. It doesn't sound like you're conflicted. He called that out so, so early. That's interesting. Not even conflicted. I feel fearful that my choices are going to backfire on me because I don't, I just don't know yet. Uh, it just feels like I need to go get more money to make her feel safer and to make us, I mean, I feel the same way. I feel concerned that having a baby is going to cost us a lot more money and we're going to need more. Yeah. And you probably are. So what are you going to do about yeah. that? Looking at buying a diner. What? What to buying a, starting a restaurant. I'm a chef. <laughs> when you said, I was like, what the, what are you talking about? Buy a diner? <laughs> what? <laughs> and starting my own restaurant. Okay, I was like, oh, okay. Have you run a restaurant before? Yeah. You ran it? Not, I didn't own it, but I ran it, yes. Did it make money? Yeah, a lot of money. All right. All right, fine. Uh, good. All right, so that's an option. You, you want to earn more money. Theoretically, you might start a restaurant. Okay. Would that solve the problem here? Try to understand the real problem. You bought a house. You're having a baby. You bought a $2,400 bed. <laughs> What's the problem? We're racking up debt and not able to rack up savings. I agree with that. Kate, do you agree with that? 100%. Okay, and is that a problem? Yeah. It is. Why, Kate? Because I have, a couple years ago, I had. And so I'm like, okay, if the problem is that y'all are racking up debt, why would you buy, why would you buy a restaurant? That's debt. Like, the restaurant is not going to make money. Like, you break even year two, year three. Like, why, it just didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Buying the restaurant is not a doesn't make sense in this situation i was making a lot of money i started my own business and i was spending money like i was still earning 55 dollars an hour and wrapped up incredible debt how much and debt? now total like twenty seven thousand. is that credit card debt credit card debt okay and how long like six months mm. okay and is that debt still around wow. seventeen thousand dollars left um but both of those credit cards closed because i wasn't making payments and so i'm very fearful of that happening again why are you fearful what was the consequence for you my, which I don't even know why I care about this so much, but like my credit score tanked. And now like I couldn't even, I'm not on our mortgage. I'm on our deed. Wait, what do you mean? You don't know why you care about that. So that's, a, that's an important thing to care. <laughs> that's something important to care about. Yeah. You should care that your credit score tanked. You should care that you can't put your name on the mortgage. Why did she say that? Why did she say she doesn't know why she cares about that so much? That's a normal thing to care about. But I'm on our mortgage because no one will approve me because my credit or my credit is shot and I don't have great payment history. That limits me and being able to help Mike with certain things, even though I'm still paying like half of everything I need to pay. Um, but like I'm not on the mortgage because they won't approve me. Nobody will approve me for anything. What do you think of your relationship with money, Kate? How would you describe it? It's changed. I, I used to be like, whatever, it comes easily, money flows in, money flows out. And then since, like, since being pregnant, that has like drastically changed. And now I'm like, oh my God, money doesn't flow in anymore. It's not as easy as it once was. Like now I have a human growing. I don't have that same mindset of like, easy come, easy go, <laughs> which that was my mindset for 30 years. <laughs> what is your mindset now if you had to describe it? All I can think of is like, it's like I'm holding on for dear life. And just like extremely rooted in fear. I like know exactly what's in our account. I know exactly where everything's going every month. I'm paying attention to it more than I ever have. I feel like I was spending money on things I didn't necessarily value before. And that didn't really make me feel like I was living the rich life that I wanted to live. And now I'm putting money. I'm definitely spending money more on like what I value and what makes me feel like I'm having a rich life. Well, I don't think anything we've talked about today is about you not spending money on a rich life. You bought a house because it's about your values with food. You bought yeah. a mattress because it's about your values with health. 
I don't think that's the question at all. I think you yourself have told me you're fearful because you don't have money coming in and you don't have any savings, right? Yeah, that's also a huge part. We have zero dollars in savings. So isn't that a bigger problem than living your rich life when you have a baby and $17,000 of debt? Why are we not talking about that? Yeah, that's a huge thing. I just like pretend it's not there. Yeah. You're going to hear a lot like, it's like she doesn't have uh, proper priorities. Like I question how she prioritizes issues. You're going to hear that throughout the course of this podcast. I can tell. And, <laughs> and it's a problem. I'm, you know, we've been talking now for quite a while and I'm trying to get you to tell me what the real problem is. But when I ask, you have a variety of techniques you use to dance around the topic. Actually, my behavior is better than it used to be. You know, I'm actually like spending money meaningfully. If you can't get honest with yourself and with me, then we don't really have a chance of making a change here. Yeah. Would you like to take another crack at this? Kate, are you good with money? I'm working on it. That's an interesting answer, but not what I asked. Answer the question. I'm not confident in being good at it at all. Okay. How would I know if you were good? Mm. If I was paying all my loans, if I was paying every bill that we actually had. Okay. That would be good. What else? Um, One thing I have done over the past couple months is automate everything. Okay. Don't tell me what you've done. I want to know, how would I know if you were good? Notice what's happening right now. I'm dancing around it. Yeah. My, yeah. My student loan debt and my credit card debt terrify me and I'm completely ignoring them. It's like she, it's like she doesn't want to talk about the problem. She wants to talk about what she has done, what she is doing. She does not want to see what is still a problem. I'm not paying, making payments on any of it. And what happens if you keep not making payments on them? I honestly don't know. Nothing's happened with my credit cards. Mike, listening to this, how does it strike you? Look at his face. It's nothing I don't know. You're not surprised. Okay, surprising. So... No. Are you concerned hearing Kate's answers? Uh, yeah, I've, I mean, I've been concerned. This, When we got to know each other, she had all of her student loan debt that was also unmanageable, and it's kind of it's been that way pretty much since I knew her. How long have you two known each other, and then um, when did you both get... Are you married? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. How long did you know each other before you got married? Eight years. Okay. And how long have you been married for? It'll be two years in August. All right. So, Mike, when you met Kate, she had unmanageable student loans. Did that concern you? Yeah. It, it took us a really long time to combine finances because I was afraid of that as well, of like getting into that. Did you tell her? Yeah. I told her that I have my own debts and I'm working on paying that stuff off. And since she was not paying that stuff off, I said I didn't want to help her until she did start paying it. Okay. Then what happened? Uh, she paid them a couple of months maybe. And uh, then we both, after much hesitation, combined finances. And now every now all of the debt is just both of ours. Why did you combine? We were married. It felt like we should. Okay. All right. But Mike, when I asked you how it feels to hear Kate's answers, you said you're not surprised. You've heard it before, I'm sure. I'm hearing this for the first time. I'm surprised and I'm troubled. I'm troubled because Kate doesn't really know the consequences of not paying the debt off. And in fact, Kate is, you're pretty candid, Kate, that nothing really bad has happened. They'll send you more. I, I was just shocked that she shook her head like in agreement with that. Like Kate doesn't really know the consequences of not paying. And she's like, no, I don't. I don't know. That's just concerning. Um, at this stage of life, that's concerning. Urgent envelopes and you're supposed to pay and you pay a little bit and then you buy yourself a few more months of reprieve. That can work for a while, but it's not really a way to build a healthy family. Certainly not a way to build healthy finances. Do you care? So much. Yeah. I don't know. You do? (laughs) Tell me how I would know if I walked into your household with a clipboard. How would I know that you care about building a healthy relationship with money? There is no indication. I don't know if you would. No. Yeah. (laughs) Why is that? Why are you dancing around? I mean, I'm not trying to judge you here. I'm trying to understand what's going on. So why do you think that you are dancing with your answers? I don't think I'm looking deep enough to find the truth. Why? Mm. Because I don't want to know. Because if you find out, what would it mean? That I have to take responsibility. You're going to see that's the thing she hates the most. She does not want to know. She does not want to see the problem because then she would have to take responsibility. And that's just something she cannot do. Like she has, you'll see, you'll see. This is extremely fascinating to me. Notice that Kate has created a cobweb of techniques to shield herself from being honest about their money. 
And to tell you the truth, most of the time, her separate reality works just fine. It's only now that she's starting to feel actual consequences with a baby on the way. She reacts extremely unpredictably, using words like fearful and admitting she doesn't really want to know about her finances because then she'd have to take responsibility. There are literally tens of millions of people in America in the same situation. And the truth is throwing a budget at them won't work. Throwing a compound interest chart at them won't work. They're not even at the how stage. In fact, many of them don't even realize what the actual problem is. They just feel bad and they don't know how to interpret that feeling or make sense of it. If you're single, you can get by in this reality distortion field for a long time. But she's married and they're having a baby and now they're facing severe consequences. And I think the worst one of all is that Mike has basically given up on caring about money in their relationship. Yeah, so I've gone the other way with where she used to be and just go, I'm not looking at it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you would find anything that shows that I care about money now other than trying to be on the show. You're checked out of money in your relationship. Am I reading that right? Mostly, yeah. Dangerous. That's bad. Are you checked out because you spent all the money you had saved and invested on this house and now it doesn't feel good? Yeah. Okay. Are you checked out at all because of Kate's relationship with money? I think a little bit is that she's picked up the slack and now where she's looking at the checking account and saying, okay, we have this to spend and that to spend and here's the bills coming up. Mm -hmm. I kind of am like, all right, well, Kate's worrying about it, so I don't need to. Mm -hmm. So Kate has now taken over that role. Is she good at it? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Okay. How would you know if she's good? Uh, we they haven't taken our house. Wow. It's a that's bit of a low dramatic. bar, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, that's a dramatic alert alarm system like can you could you have a, a less dramatic indication that comes before that <laughs> like is that a joke or are you serious i mean we have money for food and we have money for gas and we can pay most of our bills yeah. not including our debts but we can do what we need to do mm. for me paying the bills is not being good with money that's a bare minimum. This table stakes. Yeah. It's like if I asked, you know, you're, you're about to become parents. And if I said, um, are you a good parent? And you said, yes, I feed my baby. <laughs> Is that enough to be a good parent? No. No. So why would we apply like the that. same thing to our money? I like that analogy. Have you two talked about your parenting style? We've started to. Has that series of conversations surprised you at all? Not really. I think that's something both of us have talked deeply about before um, from our own personal wounds as children yeah, yeah. Um, and how we were parented. Got it. Okay, great. I'm glad to hear you're having those conversations. Have you ever had similar conversations about money? No. No. You, how were you raised? What do you remember about money as a child? It was a source of stress. And my parents would also do whatever they could to make sure we could, my brother and I could do whatever activities we wanted to do, no matter what the price was. And I was not allowed to have a job. Why is that? Uh, my mom strongly believed that when you're a kid, you're a kid and you don't have to work. But I also now as an adult feel like it's a form of control. Mm, control in a sense of. Yeah, I hate that phrase. A kid is a kid. <clears throat> like, obviously, there are things that you protect your kid from and stressors that you protect your kid from. Like your kid should not be stressed out about paying bills or whatever. But um, if you're a 16 year old has interest in money your 16 17 year old is interested in a certain deal like oh i want to be a t can i be a teaching assistant they're taking youth teaching assistants or i want to get a job at mcdonald's you, you know or i want to be a waiter and start saving up money you know like i don't know that's that is very controlling to to tell your child no <laughs> you know no, you know, I like, I don't know. I just, that is beyond, that is, that is something I c can't fathom. Um, I would, I would think a parent would be excited. Oh, my child wants to learn responsibility. That's great. So I do think that was a control tactic from her mom. Um, so she probably feels like, you know, well, since you're controlling me, then you, yeah, you, you better buy me and my siblings all the things that we want because you're so in control. So can we at least have that, you know? I need her. Uh, you can't have a job because you're a kid, but secretly you can't have a job because that would mean you have money, you have independence, you have other things to do besides depending on me. And that's why I went to college. Did you go away for college? Mm -hmm. I a went. a source of conflict in your family? Oh, yeah. My mom wanted to keep us as close as possible. Mm -hmm. And I was only allowed to go to school four hours away. Mm -hmm. which was fine. I went to school for dance in New York City and that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to go to school. I just wanted to move there and start dancing. Mm -hmm. And when I told her that, it was a huge fight. And she was like, if you 
if you don't go to college, I'm, you're not getting any money from us anymore. And I didn't have a job. I had no idea how to make money. How'd you do it? Student loans. Ah. What do those student loans represent to you now? Anger <laughs> and resent. resentment. I, I'm so sure she resents her mom. It's like, okay, you're forcing me to go to college and you are not even paying for it. And now I have debt because of a decision that you made me do. She has a lot of resentment towards her mom. Oh my goodness. Tell me. I'm so angry that I have this debt that I never wanted. And that when I first, my freshman year, I had no concept of money because I was not, it's not a conversation in my household and I wasn't allowed to have a job. And my first year was $30,000 of loans. And my parents never like raised a red flag. <laughs> like they were like, yeah, that's fine. You know, like it's really interesting to me the lack of, a, there is a lack of accountability. Um, I'm saying this because I did not have a job as a kid. I did not have a job as a teenager. I did not have an allowance. Um, I did not have any of my own money when I was a child. And when I was in college, um, I didn't work. I mean, if I did, it was like very part time, t like tutoring, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, but I, you know, but it's, it, it's odd to say, well, I've never worked before. I don't know. It's odd to say I never worked before, so I, I didn't understand anything about money. Like you do, you do understand that you can get a job and make money though. Like th there's a, a basics of money that you do you do understand by the time you're in college you understand that you understand that you can apply for a position and make and earn money you know th there are positions you can apply for on your college campus that are made for for students um, and so I just I found that you know I just I feel like it's like she's leaning so hard into pushing the accountability as far away from her as possible. You know, like, uh, I'm not saying this is entirely her fault. Like, young people, I do not expect a young adult to fully grasp the gravity of what a multi tens of thousand dollar loan will do to them. I don't expect them to have the wisdom for that. And um, it is unfortunate that her parents did not we're not involved in that because that's something your parents should protect you from. That's something that I don't expect a young person to know. I do expect your parents to protect you from and her parents did fail her there. But I don't like this excuse of, well, I've never had a job so I, I had no idea how to make money. But like, you, you're you smart enough to get accepted into a college. So, you know, you, you, you I don't like, I don't like that. <laughs> Fine. And so I now have $130,000 of student loans and I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in dance. Are your parents wealthy? No. <laughs> They're upper middle class, middle class. Could they have paid for your college? They pay $10,000 a year and that's what they said they would pay. Okay. And yeah, what is their financial status now? She's mad about that. I don't really know. Um, my mom just retired. I know now, like, now she's all of a sudden having budgets and, oh, I can only spend this much on you for Christmas. I can only spend this much on you for your birthday. Like, they also... She, she's so resentful about that. <gasps> she is so resentful because all of her life her mom bought her whatever for Christmas and she bought her anything that she wanted and she's like yeah this is the deal that we have you're controlling so buy me everything that I want and so now she's like oh now you're flipping now you're switching it up on me now you're telling me what I can't have for Christmas she she is so resentful about that oh my goodness this is, I don't know, this is so interesting, you know, she's in her 30s, like, she's in her mid-30s, y'all, like, truly, these things that occur in your childhood, in your teenage years, it, it follows with you into, well into adulthood, and most people never get this resolved, or they get it resolved in way, way old age, or by the time their parents are long gone, Wow, that's interesting. So live a life I don't want. Um, so I don't really look at what they do for money. They just like, my mom is a shopper. And just like growing up was constantly shopping, constantly buying stuff for the house, constantly doing like spending money on things. I'm like, why? Like, like for example, would you buy a $2,400 mattress? 
my mom was like that. I uh, I'm very thankful that my mom my mom was con- my mom's controlling, but my mom was not as controlling as her mom. Um, you know, oh, you can only go somewhere four hours away thing. I could tell that my mom really wanted to do that, and I could see my mom was she was trying her hardest to with uh withhold herself from going that far she was trying her hardest to prevent herself from saying that and doing that and you know i commend my mom for that because i know that's really hard she my mom was very controlling and also she's she wants her kids around and um so i could tell that was hard for her and i i really appreciate it you know i should tell her i don't know I don't I don't think I ever told her that, but yeah, I appreciated that she let let loose on that. I appreciated that. Um but anyway. You're not gonna shame my mom was also like this. She would buy stuff, buy stuff for the house. Uh uh I don't like how it's coming off very shamey. You're shaming your mom for spending money buying stuff all the time. You do the exact same thing. You bought a two thousand dollar mattress. What are you talking about? Like, no. You, one thing you're not gonna do is shame your mom for for spending money. And and the re and she's re- she's resentful about it because it's like you you have money to buy all this random stuff. Why couldn't you pay for my college that you forced me to go to? It's just resentment. It's just resentment. Chris. No, but they'll spend money on like a $25,000 car. To me, that we pay for our cars in cash because we don't want debt. So we're like, to me, that seems like a lot. Hold on. What the? <laughs> no, no. I am I hate that. Oh, excuse you? Okay, you buy your car in cash. You buy your car in cash, but you bought the mattress with a firm. With freaking a firm. You have 300000 in debt. You have 27000 in credit card debt. What do you mean? What? No, 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 no. There is no high horse. For Kate to sit upon. Oh, we buy our cars in cash. You have the same amount of debt as that 25,000 vehicle your parents purchased. And the difference is, I'm pretty sure your parents actually pay their bills on time. They pay their bills. Their bills are paid. Yours aren't. No, I don't like like this high-mighty thing. If you're going to skirt responsibility... We're barely tolerating that, but you you now annoy the crap out of me that you are trying to shame somebody for doing what you do, and you're trying to make it sound like you're better than them because you buy your cars cash. You don't, you don't buy anything else cash. The heck? Uh-uh. I'm sorry. That made me mad. <laughs> the hell? You pay for your cars in cash because you don't want the debt, but you pay for a mattress with Two years of debt. I know. <laughs> well, we bought the cars before we, uh, or the car. Um, I just don't like, I don't, that's also why I was so hesitant about the mattress. I don't want to add another bill to my plate. I don't want to have another payment. I did. You you were hesitant, but you sent your husband the link and then he bought it. So what do you mean you were hesitant? You were hesitant, but you still did it. Do, 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 y'all, do y'all get what I'm saying about this lady? Like, Because... I realized that like us fighting every single night was not going to work. Me getting terrible sleep was not going to work. Me freaking out about a, like a mattress laden with chemicals that's going to harm us and the baby was not going to work. Kate, how about having tens of thousands of dollars of debt? Is that going to work? No, it's not working. It seems to me that that's the only one that you allowed to play out. It is. Yeah. To just add on to the debt. Totally. I think because I'm just so resentful about it that I'm like, just screw it all. <laughs> it's working because it's what you're doing, what you've been doing and what you're, com- you're comfortable with it. Kate, how old are you? I'll be 33 in two weeks. It sounds like, in a way, your philosophy with money is, I've already lost the game, so I give up. I'm just going to basically play it out until something bad happens to me. And that's really sad because 33 is very young. That's very, very young. The game is not over. If she was 73, I would more understand why you want to give up, but you are way too young and you have a baby on the way. You cannot afford to give up now. That's terrible. That's a terribly defeatist mindset. You're too young. You are too young to be this defeated. Yeah, that sounds accurate. Now, if you were alone, 
I would say, all right, Kate, well, it's your money. It's not mine. If you want to play that type of game, good luck. But the issue is you are married to Mike and you have a baby on the way. Mm -hmm. So what may seem fun and flippant and something people do in their 20s in New York is actually not that fun. And it's not cool when you have a family, especially when you are the one who earns the primary income. Mm -hmm. But you don't need me to tell you that, do you? No. I'm so glad I get the chance to dive deeper into people's backgrounds on this show. You see, if you heard just the first 20 minutes of today's conversation, you might dismiss Kate. But now we learn her parents' role in her taking on $130,000 of debt with a BA in fine arts and dance. Now, we also recognize that she could have taken more responsibility to learn about these debts before she signed the papers. And we can understand why she resents her debt, even hates it, so much so that she simply avoids it. And because her parents never talked about money and she never really learned how it works, she suddenly arrived at this place where they're low on savings, in debt, with a baby on the way, and she has no idea how she should react. I'm still trying to hide, even though we've been together for a decade, I'm still trying to hide flaws. And, and yeah, she's also resentful that her parents didn't teach her about money. So she feels like she's in this situation because of her parents, because they made me go to college, because they didn't stop me from getting the student loan, because they never even taught me how to handle money, because I never had a job as a kid, so I, I didn't understand how money worked. I think she blames all of this on her parents, and she feels really resentful. So she feels like, you know, that's why she's like, screw it. I mean, I'm going to buy what I want today. <laughs> and things that I feel very insecure about, and pretend I'm not. Mm -hmm. And you haven't had any consequences, right? Yeah, that's also, I've, there haven't been any consequences. Your parents we're said we're giving you 10K. You stayed at college, incurred a lot of debt. Still got a car, still got a house, still got groceries. What's the problem? The problem for me now is choosing, now with the house, it's choosing to have a functioning bathroom or pay my loan. And how do you make that decision? I make that decision by what do I feel like I need more at the moment? This is a either or situation. What's more important to me right now? Would you now? say that's a pattern that you've had for a long time? Yeah. What's more important to me? Yeah. The consequences are that we're not able to build a rich life because we're always behind. What do you mean? She told me that she got the mattress and the house and the groceries. Mm -hmm. She's spending more consciously. Sounds like she's got a rich life. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that. I think, um, I think that there's a lot more that we want to do with our money and with our lives than just get the groceries and just pay the bills. I feel incredibly selfish for the debt that I've racked up. And so I put off paying it off because I feel like it's not fair for all this, this like $1,200 a month and like payments that I'm supposed to be making to be going towards the debt that I've racked up because it, it doesn't make sense. You feel like it's not fair, but you do understand that the longer you don't pay it, the more you will owe. Like if you feel like it's not fair now, you're making it more unfair later. Hmm? It was all student loans were before Mike, credit cards were during Mike. Um, but it feels too, it feels selfish. We don't have high income. It is week to week, like everything, we're like paycheck to paycheck. It feels like this need and this desire and this like that I need to pay these bills shouldn't fall on Mike. And so I just ignore them because I'm like, well, it's not hurting Mike, it's only hurting me. Hey, can you talk to Mike? No. Yeah. It's only. Y'all are married, so it's hurting both of you. No, her mindset around this confuses me. Mm -mm -mm. You're hurting me, not you. It does hurt me, though. It hurts us both as a family, and I know that it. I know that it's hurting you. It causes a lot of conflict about what we want and what we can afford, and whether we're b fixing that bathroom or paying your loans. And then when we say, "All right, we're going to do the bathroom," then you've expressed that you felt left out because we're choosing to ignore your loans. I don't ever like want to make my debt a priority when everything is like necessity at the moment. Like That's so weird. She, he's saying that she co complains that she feels left out because they're choosing to renovate the bathroom instead of paying her loans. But she just said that she chose the ba the bathroom because it's more important now. Ask her if that will ever change. Will that ever change? Unless we find ways to like drastically increase our income, I don't think so. 
even when we have had a lot more income than this, the loans have always been kind of at the bottom of the pile. There's always been something more important than the loans. Zane, now you're starting to see why his face is like this. I was like, oh, I see. There's never been enough to throw at them, no matter how much we make. The payment feels incredibly unmanageable. And it feels like it's just such always such a huge chunk of our income to like put, like my minimum payment is $850. Like that seems incredibly unmanageable when that's like one of our paychecks for the, the week. And so it always just feels like, okay, this has to come last because what else are we going to do? Like, this is a huge payment that I don't know how we're going to, if we, if we decide to pay this, how are we going to pay for food? How are you going to pay for gas to get to work? Yeah. But the thing is at some point you made more money, you made enough to afford that and you still didn't pay it. So any, anything that she's saying right now is just an excuse to me. Mike, go back to your question. Is this ever going to change? Will we ever be able to put money towards those loans and towards that debt? If our current reality stays the same, no. Mike, how does that answer strike you? I feel like that's one of the first honest things Kate has really come out and said. Thank you, Kate, for saying that. Tell her. That strikes me as defeated. I Tell me how you feel, not about her. I feel defeated. Okay. I feel like I don't know how to change things, and I don't know how we'll ever get to pay those loans either. Okay. Both of you look defeated right now. Am I reading that correctly? Yeah. You feel good or bad? Pretty uh, bad. My, my perspective, I'm going to take your perspective for just a second, as if I heard my partner, Kate, just say, I don't really think things will change in our current situation, et cetera. And my answer would be, that's just not acceptable to me. I'm just not willing to live that kind of life. We're too young. We're too smart to give up on life in our early 30s with a baby on the way. I'm not going to do it, and I won't allow you to do it either. Mike, what would it feel like if you said that? Confident, strong. Yeah. You ever feel like that in a different part of life? Yeah, in the kitchen. Yeah. Tell me about that. What do you feel? How would you describe yourself there? I feel like no matter what comes up or whatever challenges come my way, that I know that I'll be able to figure them out. Hell yeah. I could tell uh, Ramit has done life coaching. Like, he learned how to be a life coach because that, that's a life coaching technique. And Ramit is trying to get the husband to basically grow a spine, grow, grow a spine here, um, take some control because <laughs> uh, you're going to allow your wife to to have you all sync with her ship. You get buried in there. You get too many orders. You're missing some ingredient. You know you can figure it out, right? Yeah. All right. Translate that to money here for a second. You don't even have to believe it. Just play for a couple of minutes here, okay? Take that same energy and bring it back to this conversation. Go ahead. Talk to Kate. I think that no matter, no matter how deep we get, we're going to be able to get out of it. It's not a matter of if. It's just when we figure it out. We'll, we'll get through this. And whether we have to, whatever it is that we have to do, we know that we can do it. We've done it for our whole lives. We've, we've been getting through it. And we'll keep, we'll continue to keep doing that. Okay. I have a hard time believing it right now. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Me I think it's four. because we've gotten stuck in the, I feel like we're stuck in the trap of like, we need a house. We need these certain things because that's what normal people do. And I don't want that. Like what? what? You what do you mean? You told I know, me I asked part you twice. Of me does. <laughs> you told me I bought the house because land and it's very important for us to not be food insecure and to grow our own stuff. Yeah. Is that true or not true? Some days it's true. And some days I'm like, God, I just want to move back into our camper van so we can travel the country. Like that's what I loved. But there was also a lot of sacrifices that had to be made that didn't always make Mike happy. So now I feel like this house was like I'm always trying to look for the benefits, but part of it is also like this just feels like a burden. Like this isn't necessarily what I wanted. Okay, hold I on. Was so she doesn't even want this. She was talking about how much she wanted this farm and how important it is. And now she's finally admitting that she doesn't even want this. You know, I knew I knew somebody who was like this. And people, you might know somebody who's like this. Maybe it's with money. Maybe it's with relationships. Maybe it's with work. But, oh, my gosh, it is miserable. <laughs> These kind of people... They need, they need therapy. They have to be in therapy because 
you cannot live you cannot live life where you're saying you want one thing and then you're like actually I didn't want that and you become resentful you're resenting other people for a decision that you agreed to that is misery when you're an adult and is <laughs> it's it's hard to work around if you're he Mike is married to that and he has to learn how to work with that because this lady this lady your wife is going to sink your ship and you're allowing her you're allowing her not only is she sinking your ship but she will blame you for it even though she made these decisions and agreed to them she will blame you entirely Oh, 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 oh. Van or is it is there <laughs> is there anything in between a camper van and a house a fixer upper on a ton of land is there any possible different type of option in between the two like say yeah. something that 99 percent of america lives in yeah we've rented for so we've rented so much before and, okay. and um and honestly part of me is resentful that to mike that he like wanted this house so bad and that now we have all these things to maintain renting was easier who, who decided to buy the house I know Mike wants to say we would decided to do this together. And part of us, yeah, we did decide to do this together. Um, and part of me is like, I just did this for you. I Dude, people like this. Um, now, if I can sense somebody's like this, I am running the other way. People like, no, people like this are exhausting. <laughs> people who... They keep they keep their true feelings inside. They don't communicate their true feelings, which m most people do that to some degree. But then you harbor resentment because you didn't communicate your feelings. Um, he made a decision based on what you said that you wanted. I'm, I'm gonna push play. I think you would have said the same thing in a rental. And it was like, we have all these short term rentals and the like instability of, the, I think it was the baby. It was the, okay, we're gonna get married and have a baby and get a house and get some stability and start making money and farm our own land and be able to sustain ourselves. And that was why we got the house with the lots of land with the farm. I don't know what that makes me laugh. That makes me, I don't know what, that makes me laugh every time because it's like, you could just tell that he's like, dude, literally, we got this house because you said that's what you wanted to do. He's like, dude, we could have gotten something way more manageable and cheaper had you said from the beginning that you don't actually want this 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 house like what the heck that you don't actually care about farming like what what are we doing with chickens why do we, why do we have chickens like this dude's just like what the heck he's like not you don't you're not happy and nothing is making you happy you don't like the rentals you don't like this house and she apparently she wants to live in the woods and he's not okay with that like so they cannot come to a compromise and you definitely cannot come to a compromise if you are saying things that you want and you actually don't want those things or you're chasing what the american dream oh we're getting married so and we're having a baby so that means we have to buy a house because that's what people do like what that is frustrating and i understand i i understand why he's checking out he's like i don't effing know i don't fucking know <laughs> i get it um mm. there was a lot of time to bring these concerns up in the process of buying the house and to really stop us there yeah and i remember a lot of fights about it too and i don't feel like my needs are important what are your needs <laughs> i don't think i've really given enough time to figure it out <laughs> well kate you got a baby on the way it's time to think about it now yeah, and I think that's why our conflict is around.
girl. When I tell you I knew somebody who's exactly like this, like, holy crap. It's giving me deja vu. Rising because now I'm like, okay, what do I really want? What do I want to teach? What do I want to display for this baby? Because I can say things all day, but they're gonna, he's going to do what we do. So, Kate, can you answer Mike's question? What are your needs? Yo, this is on 1.5 speed. I don't even know what my needs look like. Paying our bills, like paying my student loans is a huge one. And my credit card debt is a huge one. I think she, what she wants, she wants Mike to do that. She wants Mike to make money and pay her debt. That's what she wants. And she knows that sounds really bad. So she cannot say what she truly wants because it sounds really bad. But I, I truly believe that's what she wants. She wants Mike to pay them. Yeah, she's saying, oh, I feel so bad. It's a burden. It's not fair. Yeah, yada, yada, yada. Like, th you also said you were hesitant to find the mattress. You still got the mattress. Like, these people who, I keep saying these people because it, it is a type of person. Like, the this person will feel bad but they will still they still want what they want they still want what they want even if they feel bad about it they still want what they want and are not satisfied until they get what they want yeah they feel bad about it but it's still what they want and she wants she wants mike to pay her debts i wish she would just say that just say like literally just say that like i'm i actually think mike would do it <laughs> I actually think he would do it because he's like, okay, I am ready for this monkey dance to be over. <laughs> so I think he will do it just so they can move on in life. <laughs> and I did when we moved to the Berkshires, we, I started paying it. And you were pissed at me because that money couldn't go towards a down payment. And so I stopped. Again, so she, you're blaming him for why you stopped paying your bill? You're, you're blaming him for why you stopped paying your debts? No way, bruh. Do you hear this? What would I do if my daughter comes out like this? Oh, no, no, no. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We, mm -hmm. we gonna, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna work on that. Ooh. It was a huge fight. You were pissed. So I stop paying. I just want to point out this dynamic that's going on here. Mike is genuinely trying to understand your needs. And Kate, in your response, you've now turned your answer and weaponized it yeah. about something Mike that's did wrong. And that's the thing. They know what they're doing. They know. Do you see how quickly she recognized? Yeah, that's, that's what I was doing. They know what they're doing. They can admit that's what they're doing. They're like, yeah, sorry, I was wrong. Yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. I was wrong for that. They, they know. They have... And the, I really want to know, please, please leave comments. I want to know your thoughts because I, I actually would like to wrap my head around people who, who have this psychology. Um, so please <laughs> leave a comment, leave comments. Yeah. Are you getting anywhere with this? No, I didn't. Anything? I don't know. Think about it. Why did you just answer his very genuine question with your response? I feel like I need to protect myself because even though it wasn't an attack, it was just asking me genuinely, like, what are your needs? It feels really uncomfortable to even know what my needs are. Why? Because I've never even made myself a priority. Why not? I don't feel like I deserve it. So instead of actually taking care of herself, she she spends her money however she likes in the moment to make up for that to fill that void there's a void in her she feels like she's undeserving of actual stability of actual security of fulfilling actual healthy needs so she buys whatever she wants whenever she wants in place of that to get a momentary a momentary feeling of being deserving. Where do you think that comes from? I'm 
really deep seated belief from my childhood. Mm -hmm. That growing up, I felt like every move I made wasn't for me. It was for my mom. You still in touch with your mom? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes not willingly. <laughs> and you're lucky your mom is still alive. So this is possible to be worked out and heal that. Uh, does she reckon? I'm sure she knows. I'm sure she recognizes that she has resentment with her mom. And that's something y'all got to work out. I mean, it's wor it's worth it to work it out. Truly, not not for the s not just for the sake of your relationship with your mom. Not even for that. Literally, for you and your newborn baby, so you're not passing on. That like, you want your child to have its own traumas and coping mechanisms. You know, like you don't want to pass on yours. <laughs> you know. You're in therapy also, right? Just had therapy today, and this was our uh, main con conversation. So <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Is that yeah. helping? Yeah, Good. a lot. And are you doing that solo, or are you doing it jointly? Right now, we're both solo, and we are have been both doing solo therapy. I've been in about three months. Mike's been doing it for about two months, and we feel like we're ready to start doing couples. Great. I'm really happy yeah, to hear that. Grow. You know, I'm always happy to hear that people who come on the show are seeing a therapist. And you'll notice that once she mentioned it, I backed off of the topic of her mom because that's between Kate and her therapist. Mm -hmm. One thing I do want to point out is how I think this podcast fits into the world of self development and mental health, including therapy. First off, I'm not a therapist. I have seen a therapist, and on the show, I frequently recommend that lots of guests go and see one as well. I think that we have a lot of options when it comes to improve ourselves. We can get books, we can listen to podcasts, we can hire coaches and trainers and therapists, but the honest truth is that most people won't hire a therapist. It's expensive, it's hard to find one, and worst of all, therapy is stigmatized in our country, which is exactly why I like to talk about it so openly. I think there are different levels of help that we can all use. Some of us start with an audiobook, others join a coaching program, Many people start listening to this podcast thinking they have some esoteric financial problem only to realize that they actually need more ongoing help from a therapist. Great to all of those situations. I want to always be honest about who I am and what I do and where my circle of competence starts and ends. And I want to give a big thank you to all the therapists who listen to the show and send me your notes. I appreciate you and support the important work that you do. Kate, I'm sure that you'll be spending a lot of time with your therapist discussing these things. I don't want to impede on that at all in terms of your parental upbringing. But I'm very curious from here moving forward what are the effects of the way that you treat money on your relationship with Mike? So what came up in therapy today was that this fear just ends up coming out as anger. And it's just constant anger. Mike, you feel that? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel resented. No, and I'm thinking about the person I know who's like her. And she does have that, like, an underlying anger just ready to come out when, when she feels needed. That's interesting. Just like the loans. Mm. That's interesting. And Kate, do you want that? No. Okay. What do you want? What type of relationship would you want with Mike? More compassionate and more loving and more open. Mm. I love those descriptions. Would you be willing to try to embody those for a minute or two right now with me? Yeah. Okay. Mike, can you ask that same question again? And this time, Kate, give me those three words that you're going to embody again. Compassionate, loving, and open. Beautiful. Go ahead, Mike. What are your needs and how can we help you get there? I need to feel enough. I need to feel important. Okay, how? What, what, what steps can we And take? like I matter. I feel really resentful that you have put back on working so much. And I feel like me and the baby aren't important. Mm, okay. Part of me feels really resented because even though you knew about my debt, it, like my debt doesn't matter. I can't get over this. I can't get over how she keeps she keeps saying my debt doesn't matter, but she won't even she won't even pay her own debt. She won't even do it. You know? I think she I wish she would just be honest and say, Mike, I want you to pay my debt. <laughs> and that I'm just a burden. My debt and me are a burden. I understand why you would feel like your debt and you are a burden, but I would like to know how I can make you feel like enough. Thank you. And why you feel so little and so small. That's a good, good job. job. Um,
I think a lot of it has nothing to do with you. And at the same time, it all does because I found somebody that kept recreating the beliefs I already have about myself. And I've never felt like I was important. Even when it comes down to that stupid bachelor party, I still don't feel important. Yeah, so it sounds like something happened that she lost trust in him or something. Bachelor party? I mean, I can see. Yeah, I can imagine what would occur at a bachelor party that would make her feel like, oh, I'm not important. Um, But that's interesting and beyond our scope. <laughs> what would feeling important look like? When I ask for something, actually listening and honoring it. I've been asking for help bringing in more income for months and it hasn't happened. And I've and you know what else? Um, and somebody mentioned this in the comments, but um, starting a farm is very labor intensive and expensive. So I kind of feel like y'all are crazy. Y'all are crazy if you think you're going to start a farm when you're struggling financially and having a first time baby for the first time. Y'all are insane. No, 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 no. This is the, everything is a bad idea. Bad idea. Feels really stressful. Can I step in for a second? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for this conversation. It feels honest. It does feel open. So I really appreciate that. I want to recognize both of you. Mike, Kay has mentioned the income part of this equation. Is that a fair assessment? What she's saying that your income hasn't gone up, and you could if you wanted to. I definitely have been bringing in less and. It's been with the intention, and I've made this clear, to find better ways to bring in money in ways that make me happier. And I have started the side hustle, the dog boarding thing, and that's brought in some money. And I've also started, I've got another job lined up, and I have have things coming. I just feel like it might be not enough. I have heard you that you need more money and that we need more money as a family. Do you all know how much you need, or is this just uh, more? Well, after looking at the conscious spending plan and filling it out, we got really discouraged because it was a significant amount more, more than I would be able to make just working in a restaurant, being a chef. And that's why I branched off and cut back the hours to try to find other ways to bring in that amount of money. Okay. So to answer my question again, what's the number you need? Kate has it. It is curious to me as Kate's pulling this up that Mike, you don't know the amount that you are quote supposed to bring in. Kate knows it. Do you find that curious? Uh, yeah. I think I was, when we first filled out that conscious spending plan, it was like, holy crap, that's more money than I could bring in. So then it just became one of those, like, I'm not even going to look at it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So both of you do this? He also has, yeah, both of you do this. Both of you don't want to see the problem. I mean, at least he's better at recognizing there is a problem, but they both do it. That's a bad combo in a couple. <laughs> this thing where when the news gets bad, you just ignore it? Uh, I used to not do it as much. Why now? Is it that all the savings went away to the house? Yeah, I guess I used to always do it. Yeah, I think I just wasn't. I don't believe you, I don't believe you changed. Oh, I spent all my money on a house and suddenly I changed. I don't believe that. Okay, at least you're honest. Yeah. yeah. So let me get this straight. Both of you have ignored money for a long time, and now you're surprised that you're in this situation. Pikachu face. I don't know if I'm surprised. Yeah, not really surprised. I'm not really surprised, but I think it's now compounding where it's like, okay, this is an issue now. Well, it was always an issue. You just didn't know it. It was always an issue. We kind of knew it. We just pretended it wasn't and that it would hopefully get better without consciously making it better. Can I tell you though? I think you're both still doing that. Yeah. 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 It makes a lot of sense. Okay. So you're both still ignoring the problems here. All right. Kate, you pull that number up. Yeah. So net, we would have to both jointly pull in $12,000 a month. You're pulling what? in 7,000 gross. So you need a lot <laughs> more money. What? What do they need $12,000 for? Look, look at, look at the, let me pause. So you're both the, still ignoring sorry. the problems here. What do they need right, twelve thousand for? Yeah, so net, we would have to both jointly pull in twelve thousand dollars a month. You're pulling in seven. Three hundred and fifty-nine thousand in debt, including your mortgage and student loans, credit card. Their mortgage, I think, is sixteen hundred. Yeah, their mortgage is sixteen hundred. What do you need? What the heck do you need twelve thousand dollars for? 
I wish I could see their whole entire uh thing because it's not adding up. Seven thousand gross. So you have <laughs> a lot more money. Is a lot more money. Yeah. All right. So so let me see if I can state this that. in a different way. You both calculated your numbers. You realized you need a lot more money in order to effectively what? Cover your expenses. What else? Cover our expenses, save money, mm -hmm. both in long-term investments and short-term investments, as well as have our own spending money. Uh, what about the debt? <laughs> oh, the debt. I mean, yeah, sorry. That was, yeah. <laughs> Literally still ignoring the problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the debt. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh, so she, she, she did make sure to say to include the spending money. Um, I'm wondering if they're including the money they're spending on renovations. Um, cause I'm like, no, like, you don't need, you don't need to be worrying about investments. Like y'all are not going to bring in $12,000 and start investing like, you know, you need to remove that from the calculation, first of all. You do need a savings. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's very interesting. I mean, I'm very... It's very interesting that sh they even mentioned investments. Like, y'all are not ready for that. <laughs> Fixed costs, which include debt. And you, so s since you realistically didn't see any path to that, you basically just got discouraged and nothing has changed. Yeah, because neither one of us have ever made that much money or come close to it. Yeah, but you don't need to make that much money. You, d you don't need that much. You need whatever you make plus $850. <laughs> that's, that's what you need. And then, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know. Do it. So it feels like a completely unreachable goal. Yeah, I can see that. Can't feel good to see that the number you would need comfortably is higher than anything you two have ever made jointly. Yeah. Yeah. And you got the house, you got the baby, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So your conclusion is what? We both shut down. Yeah. Ignore it. What would be a different way if you Avoid were it. confident and competent? What would you do? Rise to the occasion. How? I honestly don't know. Mike, do you have any ideas? Mm. Stop doing what I'm doing and do something different. Definitely not just keep doing the same thing. And that's why I've cut back and looking at other avenues. Come on yeah. Now. Um. I still think the other avenues are like not super viable. Um, oh, good. Let's crush they? each other's dreams while we're talking about <laughs> no, what I, like yeah, you're right. You're right. You guys yeah. love the pattern, don't you? <sighs> Clearly. Yeah, I think encouraging both of you, both encouraging myself and encouraging him instead of tearing down would be a huge benefit and definitely a confidence booster, then a confidence deflator, which is definitely what we both do to each other right now. It's not, it's not good. No. no. How can you do this with the two of you and you're about to incur more stress than you've ever had in your life with a baby? Right. And you're trying to have a farm. Yeah. Get out of here. Get out I'm terrified. Of town. <laughs> Are you Get terrified enough to make town. a change? Yeah. Kate? Mm -mm. That pause tells me everything I need to know. People who are ready to make a change say, I will do anything. I don't think I will. That's honest. You yeah. won't because? Why? Um, you know, I was going to say because I'm not willing to sacrifice being happy. And at the same time, I'm not happy right now. So I guess it's not really... If I were to break it down, it doesn't, my thought process doesn't actually make sense. But the way that like I see being able to make up that difference is having, is working like 60 to 80 hours. And I'm like, I just won't, I'm not going to do that. That sounds miserable to me. So there's like some things I'm willing to do and some things I'm just not because we both work. You don't have to work 60, 80 hours. You can sell the house, sell that money sink. <laughs> Get rid of that house. The hell? <laughs> oh my goodness. 80 hour weeks before working in restaurants and it sucked even though like it just didn't feel fulfilling like I wasn't doing anything else with my life except for working I had savings I had the money we were able to go on a two-month road trip across the country and you still didn't pay your debt you still didn't pay your bills Three hmm. and have plenty of money to spend sure but my day-to-day -day sucked so it's like am I willing to sacrifice everything just to like have more money no I'm not and imagine your kid sees this, you know, it's like, well, you're not willing to sacrifice for me. I don't know. I wonder, I wonder how things will change once you see, because once you see the baby, it's so different. Once you see the baby, you're in a new mindset. So 
I'm interested to see how they are once baby is born, but hmm. You're being really honest with me. My job here is to help people as far as they want to be helped. Candidly, I don't get the sense that you're really willing to make a change mm. right now. I mean, you just said it point blank. I think that you have some stories you tell yourself. One of the stories being that if you were to save money, you have to work 80 hours a week. I don't find that to be true, but you have convinced yourself that that is the only way <laughs> as a mechanism against change. And yeah. Kate, I can't help if you're not ready to change. Mike, I can't help if you're not ready to be direct in what you need with Kate. If you're checked out, nothing I can do to make you care. And so I really want for the two of you to be successful, especially with a baby on the way. But I don't think that I can do anything to help you at this point. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. I wish you both the best. Dang. Dang. Was that it? Oh, wow. I thought there was, um, maybe I'm thinking of a different couple. I thought they had a follow-up, but they didn't. Wow. That was that was real. That was honest. So what did y'all think? Was that relatable to y'all? Because a lot of the there's my comment. I'm like, what do you need twelve what do you need twelve thousand dollars for? <laughs> so, um there's a comment I really liked. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, this lady. And re even Ramit I really liked it. Um, she talks about something. Gretchen Rubin talks about a concept of drift, which is the decision you make by not deciding. And um, yeah, I'm sure. Have you met somebody like that? Like they can't make a decision or they're just going along with everybody and they're not being honest about what they actually want. And then they get resentful because they feel like you made the decision for them. Yeah. That's something some people need to work on. They live in Berkshires, which is a very high cost of living area in West Massachusetts. Not only is it expensive, it's remote and rural with low housing stock and few rental opportunities. If I were in their situation, I would give up on the farm, which another comment details just how expensive and how intensely labor intensive a farm is give up on the farm and she doesn't even want that's the thing she doesn't even actually want the farm it's like she has this fantasy in her head she wants to live in the woods and be a fairy spirit a and like her husband is like no we're not going to live in the woods and our baby's not going to grow up in the woods okay and grow up in an rv we're going to have some sense of physical stability and so she thought okay the, the next best thing is to have a farm you don't want a farm Go buy organic at Sprouts and Whole Foods, you know? Anyway, give up on that farm. If you truly want it, you'll do it in a decade. Uh, sell the property, move to Springfield or Worcester, or another urban center with more rental options and restaurant jobs for Mike. <sighs> I agree. Kate says she used to make a lot of money running her own business. Wellness is a booming industry, and she could probably build an online business with a nationwide client base. Yep. Every little bit helps, even part-time. And I'm around the same age as these two, and it's sad to see them both so hopeless. We are so young. Yes, we are so young. So much time to experiment and course correct. Yeah. These people are still young. They are way too young to be this defeated. There is time. There is still time to figure it out. This is when Kate mentioned that she sometimes wishes they could go back to van life or at least renting an apartment. And they said that the income they will need for their CPS feels insurmountable. I thought for sure the solution was going to be sell the property, right? It's very interesting that that did not even come to mind. That did not even pop into their mind to sell the property. Like what? Like why are you attached to this property? You said you don't even want the property what and use the money to get out to get debt free or i thought they would come up with the idea of renting out the acreage that's a good not even need to think about it. renting out the acreage to with rvs and for events or let people pay them for a real life farming experience or make the land into a farm to table outdoor pop-up restaurant that would be so cute 
Oh my goodness, since he's a chef who likes to farm, I felt bad for them, but I was also surprised at how little imagination they have. They've checked out, given their youth and slash Instagram generation. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure her Instagram feed is filled with band life, granola, crunchy mom content. That is interesting. Hmm. Didn't think about that. Let's see other comments. Why does she tear down Mike's career goals, but she's not willing to change or, nor work? Hmm. Of course, working while pregnant is not ideal, but people do it when they have to. She doesn't want to make uncomfortable adjustments for herself. Why can't she do it for Mike or her baby? Mm-hmm. The whole buying a farm to not rely on grocery stores is nearly the most <laughs> ridiculous thing I've seen on Remy's channel. <laughs> okay, this she kind of she kind of has a la la land. Um, and I notice that with people people like her they they have an element of delusion. Um, they have an element of delusion that they try to project into their real life. And then they get Pikachu face when it doesn't work. <laughs> when it doesn't work out the way that they wanted. Um, hopefully she learns a lesson from this. I don't know. It sounds like they are living in La La Land. He is checked out and wanted to make her happy. And she thought she's trying whatever she can to make her little existence that she feels is undeserving feel happy <sighs> yeah again yeah i knew somebody ex exactly like this to a t um just in other areas of her life yeah this episode was hard to listen to yeah i can't imagine ignoring your debt creating a mountain of debt then buying the house that needs some massive repairs and tossing the baby into the mix is very very stressful yeah once they hit rock bottom they'll either stay there or come together and call their way out yeah yeah, I think they need to hit rock bottom. It's unfortunate. They have a baby. It, and luckily, the baby's a baby. Okay, like, it would suck if it was like an eight-year-old having to experience this and remember it. The baby's a baby. Okay, as long as you feed the baby and, and clean its diaper is, is, you know, and give it kisses, it, it's good. Okay? it's <laughs> That's good. Um, So... Yeah, they might need to hit rock bottom before anything changes. And hopefully their family can survive that. Hopefully their marriage can survive that. Because that's hard. That's really hard. Yeah, guys, so, uh, like, these comments are so intriguing. I'm going to keep reading them. Let me know your thoughts, like, for real. Because, whew. That was something. Um, thanks for watching, y'all. I'm actually going to go to Ramit's website and actually do this myself. I want to get my finances in order, and I'll share with y'all what I discover um, maybe in some upcoming videos. So if you vibed, if you vibed with me, make sure you hit the subscribe button so we can see you next time. Until then, much love, much luck. Peace out.